upgrading the Onefinity CNC Original Series to the Elite Series. Please completely read and ensure you fully understand the contents of the Onefinity CNC Elite Owner's Manual before you start using your machine. In order to minimize the risk of injury and or material damages, please only use the machine and the corresponding control and electronics when you are sure that you have completely understood the Onefinity CNC Owner's Manual contents and instructions. The Onefinity CNC Elite Owner's Manual can be found on the support page of our website, OneFinityCNC.com. In this video, I'll be showing you how to upgrade your original series, Onefinity CNC, to the Elite Series powered by Masso. So without further ado, let's get started. Before we start with the install of all the new parts, we'll have to take the old ones off. We'll start by unplugging all of the wires from the rail ends, as well as removing the router from the mount. As I just mentioned, we're going to start with disassembly. We're going to unplug all of our wire connections and we're going to remove the router from the Z slider. We're also going to remove the top plate from the X axis so that we can remove the router cable to get that out of the way. Once all of the connections on the machine itself are unplugged, we're then going to move to our controller, whether that's under our table, on the side of our table, on our tabletop, and we're going to just unplug all connections from the back of the controller as we will be removing it completely. Once all of our wires are unplugged, I'm using a number two Phillips to remove the controller from the bottom of my Secure From Below QCW. Just remove your controller however you have it mounted to your work table. Our next step is removing our Z slider. If you're using the Z16, you'll need a three millimeter hex key, and if you're already using a Z20, you'll need a four millimeter. Once the Z slider is removed, we will slide the X rail all the way to the front of the machine. This is going to make it easier to access the bolts holding it to the Y rails as well as easier to lift it off of our table. Now we'll use a 5mm hex key to remove the bolts holding the X rail to the Y rail gantry blocks. Once we've removed all 8 bolts, we can now lift our X rail off of our Y rails and we'll move that to the side for the time being. Next, we're going to unbolt our Y rails using that same 5mm hex key, then setting them on the table to work on. Now that we've got the machine disassembled, we can now start removing parts from the individual pieces and upgrading the rails. Before we do anything, we're going to sort all of our pieces by their axis, whether that's X, Y, Z, or B, and we're also going to separate our wires and our mount out. Once we've got these things sorted out, we're ready to start installing them. The first rail we're going to upgrade is going to be our B rail, which will be the simplest. We have our B axis motor, our homing sensor, and a homing trigger for the sensor. As we said, starting out on our B rail, we are going to flip the rail upside down so that it is sitting on the top, and we are going to work at the end opposite the motor first. We're going to use a three millimeter hex key to loosen the bolt closest to the end of the motor to release the retaining piece that holds the connector for our B wire. That B wire can be pretty tricky to get out. So since we're not using this part again, if you have trouble getting this piece out, you can use something like a screw to screw into it to get leverage and pull that piece out. This will not be reused. Once we get that removed from the end of the rail, we can see that the plastic piece is split down the middle and will come off of the wire so that we can push it back through the length of tubing. Once we've removed that piece that retains the wire, we'll need a four millimeter hex key and an eight millimeter wrench or socket. We'll use these to remove the motor from the end of the rail. Once all four of those nuts are removed, we can pull the bolts from the motor then we can simply pull the motor from the end of the rail by pulling it straight out. This will bring half of the coupler with it. We will remove the other half shortly. We're also going to pull the wire through the length of tubing, completely removing the motor. Next, we're going to remove the remaining half of the coupler using the access holes on the sides of the foot. There's an access hole on the front and back side of each of these feet. We'll turn the ball screw by hand to access the bolts inside, and once those line up with our access holes, we can use a two and a half millimeter hex key to loosen them. Once the bolt on that coupler is loose, we'll use our needle nose pliers to pull the remaining half of the coupler from the ball screw. 
With the old motor and coupler removed, we're now ready to install our new motor with a new coupler. We'll notice there are two bolts on this side that will go to the ball screw. So we're going to line those up with our access holes and then use our two and a half millimeter hex key again to tighten that back down in place. Once that first bolt is tight, we'll just rotate it with our hand and then we can secure the second bolt in place, locking that coupler down. Once we have that coupler tightened down in place, we will reinstall the four bolts holding the motor to the end of the rail. Again, we'll use an 8mm wrench and a 4mm hex key to tighten those down. Once our motor is secured in place, we can now reinstall our wiring in the bottom tube of the rail. We'll flip the rail back over so it's sitting on its top, and we're going to feed the wiring through the bottom tube, but first we need to remove the plastic retaining piece around it. Just remove the piece of tape holding it together, and then you'll be able to split open the plastic piece, exposing the wire connector underneath. Push this through that bottom tubing until it sticks out the front so that we can grab it and place the plastic back around it. Now we see that connector sticking out of the front of the tube. We're going to use our B1 plastic cover here and we're going to make sure that the protrusion is facing upwards so that we can connect our wires. You can see here there's a bit of a recess so that will connect and lock into place. Then we're going to flip that so that the hole is facing the bottom and will line up with the bolt that we removed earlier. We'll just push this into place, make sure that hole lines up, and then resecure it with our 3 millimeter bolt. We've got that lined up. Here we're just using our 3 millimeter bolt to secure that in place. Now we're ready to flip this back over and install our homing sensor and trigger. On the end opposite of the motor, we're going to start by installing our B axis homing trigger. This will mount to the gantry block on the outside, so the right side of the rail when you're looking at the front of it. Looking at the right side of the B rail gantry block, we're going to use the top left hole to use our three millimeter bolt to secure this in place. It will sit on top of the bearing as you see here. With our homing trigger in place, we're now going to install our B-axis homing sensor with the bolt included in the back. You'll see that this bolt will go through the front hole on top of our B-axis foot. We also want to make sure that we orient the wire so it is facing towards the outside of the machine and not in towards the cutting area. There's a channel inside of the plastic piece covering the homing sensor for the wire to fit through. That will index with the two existing bolts on top of the foot, then we can use the 3 millimeter bolt to secure it in place. This completes our B1 rail upgrade. Next we'll go to our Y1 rail. The first thing we're going to do on our Y1 rail is we're going to remove our old screen mount using our 4 millimeter hex key and an 8 millimeter wrench. We're just going to remove the nuts, then we can pull the screen mount with the bolts straight out from the end of the foot. We're going to set aside two of these bolts to reuse them when we reinstall our new mount later on. Once we've done that, we'll get all of our components for our Y1 rail upgrade, as well as the Y1 rail on our table, so we can get them ready to work on. Just the same as on our B1, we're going to start by flipping our Y1 rail over and resting it on its top half. We're going to use a 3mm hex key to loosen that front bolt so that we can release the black retaining plastic pieces that hold the end of the wire in place. Once that's removed from the end of the rail, we can then split it in half, releasing the wire connector inside so that we can push it back through the length of tubing. With those components loose, we can now move back to the motor end of the rail and pull the wire through the length of the bottom tube. With our inner tube wire removed, we can now go back to our 8mm wrench and our 4mm hex key to remove the motor from the end of the rail. We'll repeat the same process by removing the coupler from the ball screw as we did with the B1 rail. I'm going to skip over that for the sake of this video here, but we're going to pull our motor from the end of our rail, then we will remove our coupler just as we did before. Once our old motor is removed, we can now move on to installing our new motor. We'll install the coupler the same, 
but the bolts that we're going to be using are a little bit different on our Y1 rail. Before we move on to that, we're going to push our wiring through the length of the bottom two, and we're going to secure it in place with our Y1 connection retainer. Make sure that the connector is facing the right way with the protrusion sticking towards the top of the rail. We also want to make sure that the hole on the bottom will line up with our bolt hole on the bottom of our rail's foot. We'll push that into the tubing. Once we've got it in the place that we want, we will use our three millimeter bolt that we've just removed to secure that back in place. Now that we've got our wires secured in place, we're ready to secure our motor to the end of the rail. We're going to reuse two of the bolts that we removed before on the inside of the rail we're going to use the Y drag chain bracket and the bolts that are included in that bag to mount the drag chain raceways to the outside of the rail. We'll still use our four millimeter hex key as well as our eight millimeter wrench to tighten the inside bolts in place. And once we've got those in place, we'll move to the other side of the rail and attach our drag chain bracket. On the left side of the Y1 rail on the outside, we are going to mount our Y axis drag chain bracket in the back using the included bolts and nuts. You'll also notice two smaller bolts with three millimeter heads already threaded into the plastic bracket of the drag chain mount. We're going to use this to secure the drag chain raceway to the rail itself. We'll insert our longer four millimeter head bolts with nuts. We're going to put a nut on each of these, then we will install the drag chain bracket itself. Here we're using a four millimeter hex key again, as well as our adjustable wrench or an eight millimeter wrench to tighten these down. Then we are going to install our bracket over the top of these nuts. If you look at the drag chain bracket from the left side, you'll notice that there are recesses that line up with those nuts we've just installed and will allow us to put another nut over the top to secure it in place. We'll use an eight millimeter wrench an adjustable wrench or an eight millimeter socket with a ratchet to tighten these nuts down and secure this bracket to the end of our rail. With that bracket installed, we'll move to the front of the left Y rail, the Y1 rail, and we're going to install the front half of the drag chain bracket as well as our mounting bracket for our Masso controller. We'll start with the Masso controller. There are two sets of bolts here, one being longer than the other, the longer bolts will go on the right side or the inside of the Y1 rail, and the shorter bolts will go on the outside or the left side of the Y1 rail. We need to make sure that these bolts go through our Masso mounting bracket. This is going to be important for the way our machine is going to home, so make sure the long bolts on the right side and the short bolts on the left side. With our Masso mounting bracket loosely installed, we're going to come in with our drag chain bracket and use the bolts on the left side to secure that in place. We'll see this has a threaded insert to secure the X and Y cables with, and it also has threaded plastic pieces that these bolts will thread into directly. We'll use a four millimeter hex key to tighten this down. On the right side of the Y1 rail, with the longer bolts already threaded through the foot, we're going to attach the nuts. We're going to secure these in place with a 4mm hex key and our 8mm wrench or an adjustable wrench. Next we're going to install the Z1 X1 clip that holds the wires to the end of the rail for the drag chains. In this baggie you will also find a bolt that will thread through this bracket and into the piece that we've just mounted to the rail. We'll use a four millimeter hex key to tighten this in place and we'll come back to this later once we have our drag chains installed. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to install our Y1 homing trigger. This will mount opposite of the B1 homing trigger on the outside of the Y1 rail, so the left side, 
If you're looking at it from the side, it's going to be the top right hole of the gantry block, and this will have an included bolt that uses a three millimeter hex key to tighten it in place. This will also sit on top of the bearing, as you can see here. After that, we'll follow that up with our Y1 homing sensor. We're gonna make sure that our wire is coming out on the left side of the Y1 rail, the outside, so that it stays out of the cutting area of the machine. This will also index with the two existing bolts and we'll have an included three millimeter head bolt to secure it in place. Going back to the Z1-X1 clip to hold our drag chain wires in place, we're going to use our 4mm hex key to remove that bolt and open that up so that we can install our drag chain wires. We're also going to use a 3mm hex key to remove the two bolts from the back drag chain bracket on the Y1 rail so that we can attach our drag chain raceways. If you look at the drag chain bracket from the back, you'll notice a rectangular recess. This recess is so that our drag chain raceway can slide into this bracket and hold itself in place. We want to make sure that the lip of the drag chain is away from the machine so that it will hold the drag chain close to the rail. You'll also notice two small silver screws that you'll need a 2.5 millimeter hex key to remove. Do not lose these screws as these will be what secures our drag chains to the raceway itself. Once we've done that, we can come along with our Y-axis drag chain. This is the 32 inch drag chain as the machine I am upgrading in this video is a woodworker. You'll also notice that on the side there's a small slot where you can fit a flathead screwdriver to pop open a few drag chain links. We're going to pop open the first three right here so that we can move the wires out of the way to more easily secure in place the drag chain itself. Use our two millimeter hex key and tighten these down in place, making sure that we do not over tighten to prevent the drag chain bracket from cracking. Once both of those bolts are secured in place, we can then place our wires back in the drag chain channel and close up those few links that we opened a moment ago. With our wires secured in place, we'll slide the end of the drag chain raceway into the recess we just looked at a few moments ago. Then we'll move to the back bracket where we will line up our drag chain raceway with the L-shaped bracket that it sits in. And we will install the two three millimeter bolts that we removed a few moments ago. These will hold the drag chain raceways to the rail, preventing it from coming loose. Once that drag chain raceway is secured to the machine, we can now secure the end of the drag chain itself to our Y-axis gantry. The bracket will come pre-installed on the end of the Y-axis drag chain, and we will just need to install the three millimeter bolt to the top left corner of the Y1 gantry, looking at it from the side. This will hold the drag chain to the gantry, causing it to move with the rail as it goes back and forth along the axes. After that, we'll go back to our X1, Z1 clip. We'll place the back side of that on our wires with the Z1 at top and X1 on the bottom. Then we'll come in after making sure those are seated with the top half of the clip, placing that over the top of the two connectors. We'll make sure that this piece connects together well. It should almost snap together if the wires are seated correctly. Then we'll use our four millimeter hex key to tighten that back down in place on the side of our Y1 foot. This completes all of the mechanical changes as well as wire changes that we're going to make to our Y1 aside from mounting the controller to the end of it later on. So now we're going to move to mounting our Y rails back to our table. This is going to give us a place to place our X rail while we are working on it, giving us a little bit of height so we're not bent over our table, as well as making it easy to access all of the things we need to work on. I'm going to secure the Y rails each with one screw in front and one screw in back. 
just so that I can slide the gantry blocks forward to give myself a place to set my X-Rail. I'm now going to bring my X-Rail back to my table, but I'm actually going to place it on the table backwards so that I can more easily access the back of the rail where we're going to be installing the drag chain. We'll start on the end opposite the motor with a 4mm hex key to remove the curly cable from the back of the X-axis. After that, we'll move back to the opposite end where the motor is and use our 8mm wrench and our 4mm hex key to remove all of the bolts and nuts. Now that we've got those bolts removed, we're just about ready to remove our X motor, but instead of flipping it upside down, since the X rail tends to be a bit heavier with the stiffy, we are going to flip it back to lay on the Y rails so that we can access the bottom of each foot. With that rail tilted backwards, we are again going to use a 3mm hex key to loosen the bolt closest to the end of the rail. This will allow us to remove the plastic retaining piece as well as the wire connection from the bottom rail. We'll use a pair of needle nose pliers to grab a hold of that connector and pull it straight out from the end of the tube. We'll split this open, releasing the connector, then we can push that back through the length of tubing. Back on the motor side, we're just pulling that wire back through our tubing to release it so that we can remove the motor. Here we'll pull the motor straight from the end of the rail, releasing it, leaving half of the coupler behind. Then we'll come back behind with our 2.5 millimeter hex key and using our access holes, we'll be able to remove the rest of the coupler. Once we've loosened both of those set screws on that coupler, we'll use a set of needle nose pliers to pull the rest of the coupler from the rail. Then we're ready to reinstall our new motor with our new coupler. Remember to make sure that your access holes and your coupler bolts line up with each other so that they're easy to tighten in place and secure that motor to the ball screw. Once we've got our new motor and coupler secured to our ball screw, we're then going to reinstall the bolts on what will be the front of the X-Rail, which is what you are looking at now. I'm working on this backwards for the sake of this video, but this is the front, not the back. With that secure, we can install the bolts on the front of the rail. These are the bolts that we removed earlier, as well as the 8mm nuts that we removed earlier. On the back side, we're going to do the same thing as the Y1 rail using a bracket to secure our drag chain to the rail itself. We'll finish securing the front of the motor in place using a 4mm hex key and an 8mm wrench. With the front of the rail completed, we'll move back to the back half and we'll install our x-axis drag chain mount back. To do this, we'll use the two longer silver bolts included in the packaging with it. We're going to thread those through the foot, then we will secure them with the 8mm nuts before sliding the bracket over those nuts as we did on the Y1 rail. You can see here we're tightening those down with a 4mm hex key as well as an 8mm wrench again. And once we have those secured, we will move on to installing the bracket itself. As we showed you before, there is a recess on the inside of the bracket to fit over these nuts. Then we're going to tighten those down with an 8mm socket and ratchet. Our next step will be to feed our wiring through the bottom tube of our X-Rail. Before doing so though, we will need to remove the tape and the plastic retaining piece around the connector end of the wire. Once we've got that removed, we will just place the wire inside of the bottom tube and push it through until it pokes out the other end. With that poking out the other end, we can put our retaining piece back around it, making sure that the connector is facing the correct way with the label facing the bottom. We're also going to make sure that this will line up with the bottom hole as well as the bolt that will thread through it to hold it into place. We'll tilt our rail back one more time so that we can access the bolts on the bottom of the foot. Then we will resecure them using a 3mm hex key. With that secured in place again, we can stand our X-Rail back up and move to installing our X-Rail drag chain mounting bracket to the end opposite the motor. 
Again, on the back side, we are going to use a separate set of bolts from what would have come with the original machine. So we'll be swapping those out, but on the back side, those will still remain the same. You can see here we have another piece with a recess to slide our drag chain raceway into. So we're going to use our included silver bolts to secure that in place. We'll just thread into that using a four millimeter hex key. Once that's been secured in place, we'll go back to our L-shaped bracket and we'll remove the bolts using a three millimeter hex key so that we can secure our drag chain raceway to the rail. Once again, we're going to remove the two small silver bolts that come pre-installed on the drag chain raceway so that we can use them to hold the drag chain to the raceway itself. Here again, we're going to use a two and a half millimeter hex key to remove these bolts. Then we can install our drag chain on our drag chain brackets. We'll slide the end of the drag chain raceway into that bracket, making sure that the lip is facing outwards. Then we can use the back bracket and secure that in place with our two bolts that we just removed using a three millimeter hex key. Once that's secured, we can install our drag chain by simply laying it into the drag chain raceway. On this one, since there is only one wire, you should be able to secure this in place without undoing any of the drag chain links. We'll use the two bolts we've just removed with that two and a half millimeter hex key again and tighten that in place, making sure we don't over tighten to prevent cracking that drag chain bracket. With that secured in place, we can now move into installing our X-axis drag chain mount for the front. This will consist of the Z2 clip to hold the wire to the back of the X-rail itself. All we're going to do here is use the back piece where you can see the Z1 connection sits in. And then we're sandwiching that with the front. Then we will use the included four millimeter bolt to secure that to the threaded insert in the drag chain bracket itself. Next, we're going to connect the drag chain itself to the back of the X-axis gantry using a included three millimeter bolt that will thread through this bracket here and into the back of the X gantry right above the drag chain. Again, you'll need a three millimeter hex key to secure this in place. Then we'll move on to our next step. With our drag chains installed, we can now flip our X rail back around so that it's sitting in the correct orientation and we will install our X axis homing sensor as well as the homing trigger. Install the X axis homing sensor and use the included bolt to secure it in place with a three millimeter hex key. On this homing sensor, we want the wire to come out the back so that it does not interfere with the Y axis homing sensor. We'll use a three millimeter hex key to secure that in place and now we're ready to install our trigger. In this bag, we have our X-axis homing trigger that will also hold our wires on top of the gantry as well as the bolts to install it. You can see there is a recess on the left side. This is for the Z3 wires for the Z motor and homing sensor. And on the right side, there's also a slot for our router cable or spindle cable to fit through. We're going to use the included bolts and a four millimeter hex key to tighten this down on top of the X axis gantry. Now we're going to get our machine all squared. So we're going to pull the rail all the way towards the front of the machine. And we're going to bolt our X rail to our Y axis gantries. We're only going to put a few bolts in at this time before we get it squared. And after we finish squaring it, we will secure everything in place. Here we are pushing our X rail and our Y gantries to the very back of the machine to square it. Once we've got it back there, we're going to put a few bolts in each of the feet to secure that in place and keep it square. Then we'll repeat this process once more just to ensure that everything has stayed square while we were securing in place. Our last axis is our Z axis. If you have a Z20, you will be able to remove the motor and install these parts on your old Z20. If not, you will have to replace your Z16 with the Z20 before installing this upgrade kit. Aside from the motor, we will also install our homing switch, our homing sensor, as well as the homing trigger on the side of the mount. 
This homing sensor will thread directly into the back plates of your Z slider with the two bolts being pre-installed on the sensor itself. Using a three millimeter ball nosed hex key, tighten these to the back plate of the Z slider. The red piece on this sensor is a little bit tight, but this is by design. Now we can use a two millimeter hex key to secure our Z axis homing trigger in place. You'll notice there are two countersunk holes. We're gonna make sure these are facing out so that the bolts will go into these and won't stick out from the slider. After installing our homing sensor, our last part we're going to replace on the Z slider is the motor itself. You'll see four screws holding the motor to the top of the Z slider, and we're just going to remove these and the washers below them with a three millimeter hex key. Be sure not to lose these bolts or washers as they will all four be reused to install the new motor. Once all four of those bolts are removed, you can simply pull the motor from the Z slider by pulling straight up and bringing half of the coupler with it. We'll then use a two and a half millimeter hex key to loosen the set screws on the coupler and remove it from the ball screw. Once that coupler is loose, we will just pull it off of the ball screw and we're ready to reinstall our new motor on the slider. You'll notice on the new motor that the coupler is pre-installed, but the spacing isn't quite right for the Z slider. So we're actually going to remove the coupler from the motor entirely and place it onto the Z slider. Then once we've got the motor attached, we can reattach the coupler to the motor shaft. Insert the coupler onto the ball screw, making sure that we line it up so that that bolt is easy to access with our two and a half millimeter hex key. Then we will tighten that down so the coupler is secure to the ball screw. Here I rotate my slider so it's easy to see that the motor has a flat portion on its shaft that we are going to line up with the set screw on the coupler. By placing the motor into the coupler this way, we ensure that our spacing for our coupler and our motor shaft is exactly where we want it to be. Once our coupler is secure, we can use the bolts that we removed a moment ago to reattach the motor, and that concludes all of the changes for our Z-axis assembly. With all those changes done, it's now time to remount our Z slider to our X axis gantry, just the same as we had it before. I'm going to be using the lowest mounting position since I'm using the Makita router currently. And this is going to give me the most amount of travel with the Makita router since it does not have as much reach as a spindle. Once we've got our Z axis mounted to our X rail, we're ready to start working on our connections to our controller and our power supply. I'm gonna show you on the tabletop all of the connections just for the ease of this video. Here we have our power supply with our A for power and five axis plugins. We also have a main AC in for our router as well as their controller and motors. And we have a second VAC AC in that is dedicated to our vacuum relay. Moving on to our Maso controller, this is our touch screen. And at the bottom you see our E stop button as well as our cycle start and cycle stop buttons, the red and green buttons that can be programmed. You will also find a USB inside of the packaging for the Maso controller. On the back you can see we have our screen mount as well as the plugs for our Y, B, Z, X, power. We also have tool setter, laser, and a touch probe plug-in. On the bottom of all these connections, you'll find the spindle port under the rubber covering. And just to the right of those red and green buttons on the front, we can see our USB port. Moving back to the front of our Y1 rail, we're going to install our Maso mounting arm. This is the aluminum mounting arm that will be in the bubble wrap packaging. It will come pre-installed with the bolt and a washer coming threaded in the bottom of it. We're going to remove these and thread this through the bottom of the cup-like mount that we've already installed on the front of our Y1 rail. This will prevent the Maso mounting arm from coming loose and falling out of the mount. Place the mounting arm thread side down inside of the cup. Then we're going to place the bolt with the washer pre-installed on it through this and secure that with a four millimeter hex key.
with that mounting arm installed, we're just going to take our Masso controller and slide it onto this mount. It will sit in place and gravity will hold it onto the mounting arm. It also swivels freely at two points. Just to make this video a bit easier, I'm going to show you how to connect your axes on the tabletop. You'll notice that on each connector, they are both labeled clearly on the ends. This one is our Y1 connector. The 10 pin connectors will go to the back of the Masso and the side with the 8 pin connectors will go to the rail ends themselves. On the 4 pin connector side you'll also notice there is a 3 pin connector for the homing sensor and on the 10 pin connector side there is a white 2 pin connector that will plug into the power supply. This is what's going to power the motor for that axis. Here we are plugging in all of our connections to the back of our Masso controller as well as our power supply. Our Y will go to Y, B to B, Z to Z, X to X, and all of the white connectors on the power supply are all the exact same. They only put out a certain voltage, which will be the same for all of the motors, so just plug them in in a way that is most convenient for you. Our last connection on this is going to be our A connection, which is going to provide power to the screen and controller itself. You'll also notice there is one white connector left open. This is going to be for rotary use in the future. After all of our connections are seated, we can now go to installing our power supply wherever we want to have it mounted. In my case, it's the bottom of my QCW. Next, we will go to installing our connections on our rails themselves. Here I'm starting with the B1 connection, followed by the homing sensor for the B1. Next, it's the Y1 connection, along with the homing sensor for the Y. And so on to the X and to the Z axis connections. You'll notice on the Y1 rail there is a spot for the Z1 connection at the top and an X1 connection on the bottom of the drag chain brackets. Coming out the other end of the Y1 drag chain bracket, we will plug our X2 connection into the end of our X rail and our Z2 connection will go to the back drag chain on the X rail. We're also going to make sure that we plug in our X2 homing sensor here on the end of our X rail. Finally, at the other end of our X drag chain, we are going to connect our Z3 connection for our Z motor, as well as the Z homing sensor. Once all of those connections are seated properly, we can now boot up our machine for the first time. We'll press the silver button on the power supply to power on and off the machine. After a quick loading screen, you can see this is what the interface on the new controller will look like. We will e-stop, then release the e-stop, then double tap the home button to engage the homing process. It will move in Z, then X, then Y. This concludes the Onefinity CNC X35 X50 upgrade to the Onefinity CNC Elite Series. Thanks for watching.